Hello and welcome to Whiteboard Sessions with me, Andrew Maff. I'm the founder and CEO of Blue Tusker, a full service marketing agency for e-commerce sellers. And today I'm gonna to go through my top 13 marketplaces that all e-commerce sellers should be selling on. Now, there's a lot more than 13, and some of these won't be great for everyone, but these are the top 13 that I have seen success with, with one or more sellers at any given point. So let's just dive right in here, and obviously we're gonna start off with the big behemoth, which by the way, if you have uh, heard the song from uh, Bo Burnham about Jeff Bezos, you should go hear it. It's like 30 seconds long, it's fantastic. Amazon, biggest one, we all know it. I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on it. Amazon is obviously the biggest marketplace. It's where a lot of sellers start off just to get proof of concept for their product, but it definitely seems to be the biggest one. I'm not considering Shopify or anything like that a marketplace, even though they're starting to release some functionality behind being able to, you know, showcase your product in a bunch of, in basically a marketplace type setting, but we're gonna skip over that one. I had to make a list because I'm not gonna remember all these. So now we have this next one with Walmart. And so basically anyone works on Amazon, right? Pretty much anyone can work well on Walmart as well. Usually what I see nine times out of 10 is someone's gonna go to Amazon, start there, and then once they have success there, they're gonna try out Walmart. Walmart is kind of like the redheaded stepchild of Amazon. It is always two steps behind. It's never, they never seem to try to innovate anything. They really just try to replicate what Amazon does. Um, so it's not exactly the largest one out of all of them. However, I do see them getting bigger and bigger over time and maybe starting to compete with Amazon but they're still so far behind that's probably gonna be several years before that happens. However, it can be very lucrative and it can be a great marketplace for you to try out. Another one, which often gets a lot of bad credit because of what it used to be, what is eBay. So eBay obviously back in the day used to just be kind of like, almost like a Craigslist where you could do bidding. Um, but instead eBay has actually started to grow into its own marketplace. You can integrate really well with it. A lot of the different shipping integrations that you use, whether you're using like ShipStation or something along those lines, really hooks up to e uh, eBay super simple. And one thing about all the marketplaces I'm touching on right now is that every single one of them has its own advertising option. And eBay is to me is one of the easiest because if you're familiar with Amazon, you know you have an ACoS, right? So let's say you're targeting a 15% ACoS. All you have to do in eBay is just say, I wanna pay 15% for advertising, and they just do that. So there's no other bidding, there's nothing else. All you have to do is just set your bidding, it's super simple, and it actually pumps out pretty well. And honestly, the amount of money you're making on eBay, not too bad for the amount of work you have to put to get onto that channel. Um, another one's Etsy. So this one doesn't work great for everyone. This one's a little kind of more on the DIY, like crafting side. Um, obviously, if you are manufacturing your product, you think that this doesn't work well for you, that's not always the case. A lot of people with any kind of customization, so if you're doing embroidery or you're doing like some kind of custom framing or something along those lines, it can work really well on Etsy. And then really anything in like home decor or crafting or anything along those lines can also do really well. You don't have to be just like a random person at home who does this in their kitchen. You can actually be a business and be selling on Etsy. And the advertising platform is pretty simple to use as well. So another one, Wayfair. So kind of similar to Etsy, um, where it works really well with like home decor, furnishings, it can work well with like office stuff as well. There's a handful of stuff that obviously doesn't work very well on it. So like cleaning supplies, even though you think it's for your home, it doesn't really work well on Wayfair. The advertising platform is relatively simple. Sometimes, you know, they're still tweaking it. It's still a newer uh, platform. It really started to pick up in 2020 while the pandemic was happening and everyone was fixing up their house. But it's another great channel to get on. So if you can justify your stuff being kind of labeled as home decor or kind of a household supply sort of thing, you can actually do pretty well at Wayfair. And I do see them starting to put in different things that aren't around home decor or furnishings like you know, vacuum filters and stuff like that. I've actually started to see some pop up on Wayfair. Um, so that's another route that you can go. Um, and then let's see, okay. So another one that is kind of like a Wayfair concept. So you have Chewy. So Chewy, similar to Wayfair, is very specific to certain categories. So Chewy is obviously great for pets, right? The one thing Chewy has done the best is that they've really done a great job with taking away any kind of pet related supplies away from Amazon. I'm even guilty of this where if I need to get, you know, food for my dog or if I'm getting toys or something like that, 
I know that what I'm getting them is offered on Amazon, but I'm going to Chewy. And the reason I'm going to Chewy is because Chewy's just done a great job at building a community. They really know exactly who their customer is. So all of their messaging, the whole entire experience is just fantastic. So if you sell anything that's related to pets, I highly suggest getting on Chewy. You can also, similar to Wayfair, kind of justify the way that you're getting on to Chewy about whether it's for pets or whether it's not. We work with some clients in some cases where they sell cleaning supplies that might help with like pet dander or something like that. And all you have to do is really adjust your packaging a little bit and then you can get on to Chewy. They kind of have their own advertising, but not really. Um, they kind of claim that they do a little bit for you. And obviously they're going to advertise for you by showing up in Google Shopping and things like that. But you don't have as much control on Chewy as you do with some of these other ones. So this one's going to be, this is like a three-way, right? So we're going to menage a trois this one. Um, so you got Target, CVS, and Staples, right? So super weird. I know why would I put these three together? Because they're all pretty different. Target's like the better Walmart. CVS is like, you know, a grab and go kind of thing. And then Staples is like Office Depot. It's for house and office supplies. But the reason I couple these together is because these three are all marketplaces that are relatively difficult to get on. When you get on them, you can actually do pretty well with them. However, when I'm talking about like an advertising kind of situation here, there's really only a handful of platforms out there. I'm not gonna list them just because I don't wanna favor anyone, but if you Google it, you'll find them. But there's really only a handful of platforms out there where they basically integrate with these marketplaces and you can run ads on them for you. So it's kind of like you go into one platform and you run your ads here and they're connected to Target, CVS, and Staples. So think about like if you were to use Facebook Ads Manager, you're running ads on Facebook as well as Instagram. It's kind of like that. Um, and these can work pretty well. Target works really well for, you know, stuff that you would sell on Walmart or Amazon or really any of these Target could work well for. Um, CVS works well for kind of like your grab and go stuff. You really want to make sure that you're priced well on, on CVS because they typically do better if they're at lower price points. And then Staples is basically all office supplies or something that you could justify needs to be at an office. Um, so next, speaking of price points, Alibaba, that's an A. So leave it to me to do a whiteboard show where I have the world's worst handwriting, but Alibaba is basically a little bit better when you're looking at like price point or bulk purchasing or anything along those lines. And this kind of, eh, you know, never mind. I'm not gonna get into that one, but I'm thinking of another marketplace now. But anyway, so Alibaba is a good one if you're at lower price point or you're doing kind of wholesale or something like that. There's a lot of skepticism around Alibaba. It's bigger internationally right now. Um, but it is another platform that you could try out. They do have some people who do, you know, sales and actually do purchasing here in, in the state. So it is one thing that you could try out. Um, another one would be a couple of these. I'm going to, whoops, there's two of those in Google. Google Express or Google Shopping, uh, not Shopping Ads, but Google, whatever they end up calling it because they change it all the time. Um, but Google Express or Google Shop or whatever they end up calling it by the time this video comes out is what they've started to do, which I think is genius, is that they're you know connecting really simply with big commerce and Shopify and WooCommerce and all those, allowing you to drive your catalog directly into Google and then basically having a giant showcase of products. The problem right now is that the interface for it is not very good and not a lot of people use it, so it's not the best, but the, obviously the best part about it is that it's a very simple integration out of whatever your platform is and it's free. There's no charge to be on here. You can set up Google Pay where someone can pay directly on this platform or they can be linked over to your site to purchase there. But if you have your own Shopify, your own WooCommerce or BigCommerce or any, any of those, and you have the option to get a Google Merchant Center and connect it to this, I highly suggest it because it can't hurt. And eventually, hopefully, they'll start to improve upon this and it'll be similar to just going to Google like you do on Amazon, in which case you definitely want to be a first mover there. Um, another one is Facebook Marketplace. And you know what? I'm not even gonna bother trying to spell. You, you get it, that's Facebook and that's Marketplace. So Facebook Marketplace is like knocking off what Craigslist used to do. And in the beginning, they obviously did do that. And you know, it kind of reminds me of like a little bit of the early eBay days because of the way that things go. But you can actually integrate your, your website with Marketplace and offer products. And really all you have to do is say that you offer shipping as opposed to a pickup. So if you ever used Mark Facebook Marketplace and sold something at your house or something like that, 
it'll give you the option to say like, oh, you know, pick up only or maybe you'll deliver it or something. And basically that option of delivering it is something you can connect through your, your um, website. So if you can connect Facebook Marketplace through your website, you can actually get a pretty good option here to set up on Facebook. And it's not bad, you can get a handful. And to be honest, like a couple of these, most cases, right? I'll tell you like eBay, uh, depending on what you're selling, Wayfair, Facebook Marketplace, Google Express. Yeah, I'm gonna go, eh, you know what, depending on your selling, sometimes Walmart, but I call these like, you know, help you keep the lights on kind of marketplaces. Like you might not do that much with them, but the upkeep for them is like nothing. You really just integrate it and then you need some kind of platform to integrate all of your inventory and things like that. But otherwise, like all of these, like, you know, even if you're doing, you know, let's say five to $10 million a year throughout your entire business through mostly Amazon, your own website and stuff like that, you'll definitely do like anywhere between like 10 to 20,000 a month at least on these. So at least they're keeping your lights on. Um, sometimes, you know, more or less, like some people I know do really well on Walmart and do nothing on Facebook Marketplace. I know people that do decently on Marketplace. Um, so this is 12. And so 13, my last one, this one is going to be specific to um, anyone who's doing consumables. So Instacart, if you have the ability to be in retail, the best part about Instacart, and the only reason I'm kind of considering this like a marketplace that you can sell on, is because if you're available in retail, so if you're available in like, let's say like a Publix or a Wegmans or something like that, you can actually run ads on Instacart and suggest people to buy things based on the store that their Instacart shopper is going to. So I'm guilty of this all the time is we use Instacart because I hate grocery shopping. And so basically we have, it's like that DoorDash or it's like Uber, like someone goes and gets our groceries and then brings them back, right? Well, when I finish shopping, it says like, did you want to get some of these or did you finish these? Or if I search for a specific product that I want, it obviously shows me the first fewer ads. So you can actually run ads on Instacart just like you would anywhere else. So this is another great way if you're doing consumable to try and get into grocery stores so you can run ads on this. I know it's not really a marketplace, but they've done a great job at making retail feel like a marketplace, especially since someone's picking it up and delivering it to me. There's not that big of a difference. Um, I know this one's a stretch, but hey, deal with it. Here, I'll give you a bonus one. How about this? Uh, I don't really like this one, uh, but Newegg is decent. It's mostly on the tech side. It kind of reminds me of an Alibaba because it's kind of like cheaper tech stuff most of the time. Um, that's not always the case, but sometimes that is the case. They've been doing a decent job at trying new things um, and, you know, giving it a shot. If you're selling tech or maybe if you're doing like iPhone cases or something like that, you can give Newegg a try. Um, I think they have their own advertising platform. I only have a couple people we work with that are on there and we're not advertising. We're just on it. Um, so I'm not 100% on this one, but I felt bad about that one. So I gave it up. Um, so this was your 13 top marketplaces slash 14 top marketplaces that you should absolutely try out if you're an e-commerce seller. Worst case scenario, take a handful of your products. Don't do your entire product line and just throw them up there and see what happens. Take some of your best sellers off Amazon and put them on Walmart if you have a large product line. Otherwise, I highly suggest looking into all these because you have to diversify your business. You can't be in one place. Otherwise, you're just setting yourself up for failure at a certain point. But Really appreciate everyone tuning in. If there's any marketplace I missed or if there's something that you want me to cover, chances are I'll have to update this video one day. So please make sure you comment, let me know which ones I've missed. And then comment, let me know what other videos you might want me to cover. But otherwise, rate, review, subscribe because these are gonna come out on a weekly basis at minimum. So if you have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, I will see you all next time.